In the last video, which was video number 34, we looked at the idea of a deferred annuity and relating uh, the present value of a deferred annuity as the difference of two annuities immediate. That was problem 2.1.22. Actually, we're going backwards in the book by Broberman to 2.1.21 in this video. We're going to look at the present value of an annuity immediate in kind of a strange way as the difference of the present values of a perpetuity and a deferred perpetuity. What is a perpetuity? I introduced that a couple videos ago. It's a stream of payments that goes on forever. It's an annuity that goes on perpetually. So here's the, here's the problem statement. Um, but when I approach this problem in solving it, I'm going to think of it in a few different ways like I have done. And I'm also going to pretend that I didn't know what the answer was when I start to solve it, uh, just to make it interesting and to encourage you to actually believe that you could derive these kinds of things as well on your own. The problem says show that an, and I added a parenthetical remark here, which is the present value of an annuity immediate with payments of one at the end of the next n periods, can be written as the difference between a perpetuity immediate and an n-year deferred perpetuity immediate where the n-year de deferral it means you wait n years for it to start, though because it's a perpetuity immediate, it's actually going to start at time n plus 1, which again is a little strange. That's the way the book phrases it. I added another, another parenthetical remark to be a little bit more precise. We're actually after the difference of the present values of these things. All right, so let's, let's pretend that we didn't know what the problem statement was, and let's just pretend we're thinking about a perpetuity, okay? So you've got a, you're at time 0. Um, and you've got a perpetuity paying one at the end of every period, starting at time one and going on forever. And let's pretend you decide you want to break this perpetuity up into pieces like we've been doing recently with annuities. Um, and you go up to time n and say so we've got a, time, a payment of one at time n, but then we continue. We've got a payment of one at time n plus one, at time n plus two, forever, etc. And you say to yourself, you know, well, I could break this perpetuity up into pieces. I could consider the first n payments, and then I can consider all the payments that go on forever after that. And I could think of the present value of this perpetuity at time zero as the sum, and that's the more natural way to think of it, perhaps, whereas in the last video we talked about a difference, of the present value of this annuity immediate with n payments, and the perpetuity that goes on forever starting at time n plus 1. Certainly the present value of this thing at time 0 is a n. The present value of this stream at time n, one period before the first payment, would be what we called a infinity. Those payments are going on forever. To relate these things to the present value of the entire income stream that starts at time 1, at time zero, I now have to take this and discount it back in time n years, multiply it times v to the n to get v to the n times a infinity. And the sum of these two things right here should then be the present value of the entire income stream that goes on forever at time zero, which since it's an income stream that goes on forever or perpetuity, its present value is also a infinity. So in fact, because of this analysis, we can say a infinity is the sum of these two things. It's a n plus v to the n times a infinity. Kind of a strange looking equation, but that is true. As far as doing the problem now goes now, we want to write a n as a difference. We can just solve this equation for a n. A n is now, can be written as a infinity minus v to the n times a infinity. We've written it as a difference of a perpetuity immediate and an n-year deferred perpetuity immediate, more precisely their, their present values. There's your perpetuity immediate, there's your present value of your deferred perpetuity immediate, deferred by n years. It's not really a proof, it's just an intu intuitive way of thinking of things that allows you to derive equations and then use them in problem solving. As far as proving this, we can use the series definitions of these things, or we can use the simplified formulas. Let me do it both ways. So I'm really doing this problem in three ways. Um, so a infinity, for example, 
by definition is really uh, the present value discount factor v plus v squared plus v cubed plus v to the fourth, etc. forever. A n is really v plus v squared plus v cubed plus v, etc. up to plus v to the nth power, and then we truncate it there. If I think of this expression up here in terms of series then, it's going to be v plus v squared plus v cubed up to v to the n for this one. And then it's going to be v to the n times this thing, this infinite series, v plus v squared plus v cubed. Are we worrying about convergence? Not really. I mean, this kind of geometric series is going to converge when the absolute value of v is less than 1. For us, in all realistic situations, v is always between 0 and 1, so there's no issue with convergence. Do this multiplication. You can do that. Distribute it through, and you would get exactly v plus v squared plus etc. plus v to the n plus v to the n plus 1 plus v to the n plus 2. I'm just adding the exponents now on the right, etc. It goes on forever. That is indeed a infinity. Um, this also can be derived algebraically by using the simplified non-series formulas for these things. Let's use a blue marker here. A n plus v to the n times a infinity. The non-series forms of these things that come from the, for the formula for the sum of the geometric series. A n is 1 minus v to the n over i plus v to the n times a infinity. Uh, we did see in a couple videos ago that a infinity can just be most simply represented as 1 over i. And now you just add these things. We already have a common denominator, in fact. We get this, and the v to the n's cancel, leaving us with 1 over i, which is indeed a infinity. So once again, a third confirmation of this fact, which is equivalent to this fact, which was what we were after in the statement of the problem. Okay, so more practice with timelines and series and other formulas.